Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So this channel, Everyday Data Science, is all about trying to learn the different concepts involved in data science by practicing a lot of questions. In this video, I am going to solve this question on lead code regarding list the products ordered in a period and try to walk you through how we can develop solutions to such problems. This question has been asked in Amazon interviews over the past couple of years. Okay, so let's jump right in. We are given a table called products with three different columns, product ID, product name and product category and these are the data types, product ID being the primary key for this table. This table contains the data about company's products. We are also given a second table called orders with again three different columns, product ID, order date, unit and these are the data types, no primary key for this table and can have duplicate rows. Product ID is a foreign key to the products table and unit is the number of products ordered in order date, right? We are asked to write a SQL query to get the names of the products that have at least 100 units order in February of 2020 and their amount. The order of the result doesn't matter. So let's go through this example, right? So we are given products table, then we are given orders table and then we need to return in February of 2020 which of the products were ordered at least 100 like uh, the number of units ordered is at least 100 right so for example if you look at a uh, product id 1 right so in february of 2020 130 and product id 1 is lead code solutions so lead code solutions 130 then uh, for 2 right so since we are only looking at February of 2020, so this will be ignored and for February of 2020, 80, so will not be in the output. For 3, it will be out in, uh, so it is February, but only 5. For 4, all 3 are March, so like we don't need to worry about that. And for 5, so there are 2 rows and uh, the sum is 100, so this will be in the output and 5 is lead code kid. 100 right and this is going to be the output right so basically the logic to do this would be if we start with the orders table right and we group by uh, product id and keep only those rows where you know order dates year is 2020 and month is second so february of 2020 then we group by product id and calculate the sum then what we do is we can store it in a common table expression and then we can join this common table expression with the products table because we need to return the product name right we can join that on product id because we have the common uh, column in both these tables and then we can return the product name and the sum of the units and keep only those rows where the number of uh, units is at least 100 right so very simple logic let's go ahead and start building this query so the first thing that we need to do is from this table called orders we are only keeping those rows where the year from the order date column right is equal to 2020 and the month from order date column is second that is february 2020 then we group by the product id and then return the product id and the sum of units column so unit and alias it as let's say unit feb Right, because in February of 2020, right. So what we'll do just do is for orders table, uh, it will only keep those rows where order date is 2020 and order month is February. So February 2020. Then it will group by product ID. So each of the groups calculate the sum uh, and return the product ID. So for each of the product IDs, we have how many, how much units were sold in february of 2020 we can then store this as common table expression so with cte as then what we can do is now with this city what we need to do is take this common table expression alias it as c left join on left join this table products table aliased as p on c dot product 
id is equal to p dot product id right and why we are doing this because we need to return the product name and in the common table expression we have the product id so we need to see that for each of the product id what were the product names right we do that then what we do is we return right we return the product name product name is in which table products table right so p dot product name and we return the sum right the units fib so units fib as because in the output our column should be named unit right so as unit and the only thing left to do is we only need to keep those rows where the number of units were at least 100 right so keep only those rows where units fab since units fab belongs to a uh, common table expression right so c dot we can write it even if you don't write it won't matter but like it's good to have clean code so c dot units fab equal to or greater than equal to since it says at least 100 and yeah so let me go ahead and run this to see what happens yeah so this is accepted our output is same as expected output let me go ahead and submit it to see if it passes all the test cases so yeah this passes all the test cases and this is how i do it again like very simple query uh, all we had to do is you know use the orders table group by keep only certain rows so that we make sure that it is february of 2020 calculate the sum and then use this product table to get the product name of those product ids right let me know if uh, there's any better solution or easier solution or you don't need to do the common table expression um, like it, it would be helpful to learn um, yeah and until then i will see you guys in the next video